first school committee meeting to order at 7.01. And uh, I just want to welcome everybody back. <laughs> we had a restful break from uh, school committee work anyway. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of you have been busy with other things, but um, so uh, first we'll have an uh, agenda review. Are there any questions or comments about the agenda? No? The acronyms. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. I figure I'll get into it. I know, I know, I know. Um, okay. Um, and then, uh, so now we just need uh, to approve the minutes from May 15th and June 26th. Um, were there any questions or comments about the minutes? Would somebody like to make a motion? I move to accept the minutes from May 15th, 2012 and June 26, 2012. Second. Okay. All those in, is there any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Great. Unanimous. Um, now we'll have public comment. Um, I just want to remind people that um, it's a school committee policy that school committee does not respond generally to public comment, but we will listen respectfully and take notes. Um, I ask that you come to the microphone and identify yourselves and um, limit your comments to three minutes. And just a reminder that um, we can talk about things, and, and uh, but we try to st we stay away from talking about people and naming people. So. Uh, Vincent O'Connor, um, Summer Street, a Precinct 1 town meeting member. Uh, two items. I want to express my concern about the manner in which the school committee meeting that preceded the meeting whose minutes you just, the June meeting whose minutes you just approved, was canceled despite the presence in the town of a quorum. It appears as though from the newspapers that um, people who were concerned about what was going to go on with the um, the after-school programs were um, apparently, uh, did not, it became clear that they were going to come and protest at the meeting and the meeting was canceled and I don't know whether there is a something, a relationship between those two things, but it, it didn't look good and it made it appear as though the school committee was trying to hide from um, the, uh, the citizenry of the town, which I think is a, not a good thing. Um, the second comment I'd have is that as a town meeting member, I do remember that we had, we had to take money out of the reserves to approve, um, I think, the elementary school budget to get a sufficient amount of money. And I read, I think, last week that another $100,000 administrative position has been created. Um, and um, I just want to express my distress as a town meeting member given all the discussions about the administrative uh, situation with the school district, not only the numbers, but the, the apparent um, differential between our school districts and other school districts of similar sizes in, the, in Western Mass, that um, it's a very distressing thing. And I, I would hope that there is, one, some explanation about um, not just why it's being done, but where is the money coming from? What is, what is not going to be done? Um, are the athletic teams going to have to raise $150,000 rather than fifty dollars to support the athletic programs? Um, I, that, that answer and information was not in the newspapers. And so I hope that in some way it's forthcoming because um, I think uh, we, we apparently were shown one thing and now we're getting something else. And I would be very concerned if any um, activities uh, that we have been assured or class size issues and so forth were not going to be affected and now we have another $100,000 positions and some things are being chopped. And so I would urge the school committee to address that issue at some level at some point um, less people who vote for your budget um, get to the point where they cannot, in good conscience, give 
give you the authority to do stuff because they don't trust what you're going to do. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Eileen Morasco, and I have a question for you. Um, have you folks already received the school improvement plan presentations from the elementary school teachers? Or the, okay, uh, or elementary school principals? No, okay. I just um, would hope that the product of a meeting that we had in August 2nd uh, mm -hmm. with some concerned mm -hmm. parents from Fort River uh, discussing the dysfunction in the building and in the atmosphere and the climate there would be incorporated into the school improvement plan mm -hmm. that Principal Hall will be presenting. Um, Maria did um, offer up uh, perhaps the formation of a parent advisory board that would be mm -hmm. helpful in um, facilitating better communication there in the building. And I would just hope that that would not be lost in the sauce and that uh, that would become a part of the school improvement plan. And um, I'll just <coughs> pass this over. You folks can pass it along there if you'd like to take a look at it. This was just something that um, Ms. Garrick did not feel was appropriate to look at uh, at that meeting, but it is the result of the tell survey of the building um, regarding uh, different aspects of professional development, teaching, um, the atmosphere in the buildings, uh, sense of trust and leadership and other issues uh, in terms of building climate as well as um, the different issues that would affect um, the professionals in the building, uh, facilities, resources, that sort of thing. Apparently, um, there was not a high enough response rate from Crocker Farm or Wildwood. Mm -hmm to look at those buildings comparatively, but there was a 75% response rate, and I know Principal Hall worked very hard mm -hmm. to get all of her staff um, that, were avail that were eligible to respond to respond to it, and I've just kind of marked some of the areas toward the back pages where you might see um, some of the results that would be concerning. So I just pass that over to you. You'll be seeing full results. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks. But Thank we'd you, be happy Eileen. to. Okay. All right. So now uh, let's move on to our superintendent's update. Okay. So I will pass these um, out to people. And then maybe, maybe if you wouldn't mind just passing that. And oh, actually, let me give you some of these too. Thank you. Okay, so um, a few updates um, to note. That first, I just want to say a public thank you. Um, at the end of the school year, we had an ice cream social where we asked staff to come and just be appreciated where we were serving ice cream. And we had um, three uh, groups who provided free the, the donations for our teachers and um, Harold's Ice Cream of Northampton, Froyo World, and Go Berry Frozen Yogurt were kind enough to provide um, the goodies for our staff on a really hot day to come after work and um, be recognized by those of us who were scooping. So we want to thank them very much for, um, for providing that wonderful treat. Um, also, I just wanted to formally invite people to convocation, which is the start of our school year, is on Wednesday, August 29th, and where all of our faculty and staff come together, and um, we have a brief um, opening ceremony, which is an hour long, that we'd love to have school committee members come to. We get to the building around 8, and we start promptly at 8.30, and it goes until 9.30. So again, um, if you're able to join us, we'd love that and we'd love to have you acknowledged. Um, again, first day celebration for those of you who are, have been involved in the past and for the community, the 29th, which again is Wednesday, <coughs> the evening, 5.30 to 7 on the Town Common. We will again be celebrating our students coming back to school and it's a community celebration. Um, we are working with many of our partners to um, who will be having booths set up around the Common for families to be able to gather information um, we will be having um, Amherst uh, 
Family Outreach of Amherst will be there, which we will be um, showing our new outreach van, which I'll mention a little bit further down. Uh, we also have Big Brothers Big Sisters who comes. We have a representation from higher ed. We have a lot of our athletes from UMass, Amherst College, who come and provide, um, do activities with the kids on the common. And um, we'll have musical performances from many of our high school students and some parent groups. So um, it's an amazing opportunity for people to come and show their support of our children um, entering back into a school year. So we hope you all will come. And it's very kind of a low key night. Um, if in case there is rain, we will be doing that at the high school at, uh, um, cafeteria, just in case, but there'll be sunny weather, I'm sure. Um, also Backpack Project 2012, as many of you know for the past, I think two years, this is our third year? Yeah. So I mean, it blends together after a while. You know, our community has really um, come together to provide <coughs> school supplies, backpacks, and fully packed with school supplies for the start of the school year for students. Um, kindergarten through um, high school and to provide them initially to offer for families who are income eligible and who really this is a very large expense I mean we all know when we're providing supplies for our kids to start it's it is substantial and um, our community members individuals I, we had parents come in and drop off supplies we've had groups such as um, you know, the, the uh, colleges and um, institutions of higher learning. We had the Lions Club. Um, we've had the Rotary Club who um, donated, I think, about 100 backpacks fully stocked this year again. Um, we had different locations where people have had dropped off um, backpacks at orthodontist office, Hampshire College, inter our interfaith groups, um, and many, many other places. And we really greatly appreciate their support. We have... Um, handed out about 400 backpacks at this point to our children and partnering with um, the Amherst Police Department, um, UMass Police Department, Fire, Holyoke Fire Department, and Springfield Safe Seats. Um, the police and, um, were on hand to, to fit car seats and booster seats um, for families who needed and wanted to have updated um, seats for their kids and they handed out about 40 seats. So um, we had two days when this was happening and it was a huge success. And we also wanna to say to the public that we do accept additional um, supplies throughout the year. And for families, we do continue to pass out backpacks. So if someone hasn't picked up their backpack, you know, they can just give a call to Kim Stender um, and they can look on, on the website and Kim will make sure that people are um, provided with those great resources. So we want to thank everyone for really, again, contributing to the start of the school year for our students. We had two amazing summer interns, which I know you all received, um, I think, an email from Kim. We had Harmony um, Jean Charland from UMass, who is an AmeriCorps VISTA um, student, and we had Tian Busby from Amherst College from their um, Citizen Summer Program. And these two young women were spectacular and they worked with us over the summer around our MSAN work, around our backpack project. Um, you'll see that we had them on Amherst Media, who was gracious enough to have them interviewed. There were a couple articles written about them, and it was amazing to not only see um, these college students who were so committed to giving back to, um, in this case, the public schools, but also their, their commitment to um, being part of a community um, in the long term, talking about their future and what they hope for the future was really inspiring. And they added an amazing energy um, to central office. So we are thrilled and we, we thank very much UMass and Amherst College for providing us with those interns free of charge. Um, and they were unbelievably helpful for us. We will be having another intern I know from um, UMass over the course of a year and we're looking forward to welcoming her on as well. Um, I want to mention briefly that our alumni directory, I think I mentioned before, we were having an updated alumni directory, which happens every so many years. Um, I was supposed to bring it to show you, but we do have that completed at this point, and we will be joining with Amherst Education Foundation for a kickoff event in the fall, um, looking for alumni giving, and we'll have a music and art act, um, performance uh, around the time of homecoming when people come back and do have a lot of their reunions. So we'll be working with Amherst Education Foundation and they will be kind of the, the um, conduit for the majority of the giving, but we thank them for stepping up and um, many, many of our alumni have been 
um, have requested these um, updated versions too, and they're very excited about the opportunity of reconnecting. And some of our themes this year for um, our opening day convocation is having our alumni to really kind of envision where our, our children can be in their future and, and how we as a school community and as a wider community help to, to support and shape students um, envisioning where, where they can be in the future, where they want to be in the future, and who they will become. So we'll be having some of our alumni speak to that point at convocation. It may just be quotes, um, but people have sent in information for us to include, so it's really um, kind of powerful. Um, so the outreach mobile that I mentioned earlier, many of you have heard me talk about this for a couple of years now, that we've, we had a kind of a brainstorm when we were working with a partnership with Amherst, um, Outreach of Amherst, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, we were working with Department of Children and Families and a number of groups and we were saying that um, in Amherst to really provide outreach to many, many families, we have to have a way of going to families and many of our um, complexes and apartments in town do not have a community room or a location where people can um, go and meet families and provide supports and services and, and really hear from families of what they need from the school and from the town. So we were fortunate that uh, Family Outreach worked closely with their, their funding and their funding organization of CHD and we were finally able to realize that they have provided a van. So we are kicking off a partnership and asking for our community members to come together and to really think about what we could, what this van and this opportunity could become in terms of a partnership. And we'll be working with the town of Amherst and um, the health department and just thinking about what, what might be of um, support to families. And we will and have been reaching out to families to, to ask what would be, because again, we don't want to make assumptions of what would be helpful, but we really need to hear from the community so that we can um, partner to um, make a difference. So it's, it's kind of a creative option, and um, people are very excited. And that, that van will be parked um, at the first day, first night oh, celebration, good. so people can see, and we will be asking for Suggestions of naming the van. Um, my suggestions of like the Partridge family or the, you know, that stuff didn't go. So um, I think we need to come up with some ways that maybe some community members or some kids can say, here's what we should call this. Um, but it has amazing uh, potentials um, for helping out our families and kids. Um, the last two items I just wanted to mention briefly are one is kind of a, a reinvigoration of the Latino Student Achievement Initiative that began in 2006 um, under Superintendent Jerry Hockman. And there have been many families who have really raised the issue of wanting to keep that initiative moving when we were noticing disparities between Latino students in terms of achievement, um, uh, discipline uh, records, and, and other ways that we're notice, noticing a gap. So uh, Marta raised um, kind of the question of let's reinvigorate and she would lead this charge to think about and work with a group of interested school, school members, staff members, as well as community members to really um, think about a holistic approach to partnering with families and with students, specifically um, the many um, Latino groups that we have represented in our community. So Marta will be um, kind of reinvigorating that work, and I know that they are setting up a meeting at the end of August to begin taking some steps. Also, I think I've mentioned to the committee earlier, um, we had, I know there's been many, many um, groups working in our community around issues of um, race, um, uh, proficiency for all students, um, moving, um, identifying that there really shouldn't be very, uh, any variance or predictable variance in, in how we look at the achievement of our, of our children um, and participation and um, access to uh, school opportunities. So when we started to really look at um, our equity work and we started to create um, some action plans within, what I like to say, like kind of the sphere of our influence within our, our walls and our doors, um, we, you know, bringing uh, Ron Ferguson in and some other uh, people to really start engaging us in a conversation, it became um, clear that, that we needed to not only work within our world, but also to really engage the larger community, which I know has occurred um, in the past. And many people have said to me that we didn't quite get it right in the past. So there's a commitment to continuing a conversation around is issues of um, race and class and achievement. 
So um, my five college advisory group, um, we kind of brainstormed some, um, some next steps in this area. And Carol Souls and John Reif from UMass have really stepped up um, with Sally Perdomo and um, brought in two other professors who are very skilled in um, intercultural dialogue, cross-cultural dialogue. Um, uh, with students, with community members, and with staff and faculty. Um, and I'm not going to remember both people, Leda Cook and Jimena Zuniga. I think I did. Did I do that? Okay, I got it. Okay, so we have these two professors who have joined our group now. So we are in the process um, actively of, of talking about how can we create opportunities for meaningful dialogue within our schools, with students, within our schools for staff, and then also connecting with the broader community. Um, and you'll see it's really to um, build stronger relationships built, built on trust, uh, to learn about different cultures that are represented in our schools, and to do a better job of making strong connections with families, um, to be able to talk honestly about issues of race um, and racial differences, and to confront barriers that are in schools right now that are um, affecting student achievement, and to promote parent involvement. Um, and then we want to find some common ground, and, and from that common ground to create some action steps. So this group is very committed. We wanted to make sure that we started some tangible, created a tangible out, um, timeline leading up to the 2013 student conference, the AMSAN conference, and then going past that conference. Many of the school systems that have engaged and had um, student conference come to their communities have, have engaged in such a process to make um, the conversation not just a school specific conversation. How do we strengthen um, what we are providing for all of our students and how do we strengthen the pipeline to college and, for, and to other opportunities in our community. So I just did, did want to tell you that that was gaining some traction in this. And, and, and Michael Burkhardt as well. Yeah, Michael Burkhardt is part of, we have community members part of this group. Michael Burkhardt joins us. Um, other community members who are, are very interested. Michael has been um, providing the school system this year with some work, um, starting with our leadership group around issues of equity. And we've started very concretely around noticing around issues of equity within the leadership team. And he's going to be working with us over the course of the year. And he's very generous to give his time um, without fee, which is wonderful. Um, so, And he's been very committed to our community for a long time, as many of you know have worked with Michael. So we are really. Um, accessing the expertise of our community and of higher ed in the, the commitment of families and students and staff to really to reinvigorate and start to have um, a conversation that can helpfully create some actionable steps. Um, so we are, I think we have another meeting later this week and hopefully I'll have something a little more concrete to present to the whole committee um, shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Those are my updates. Sir? A couple of questions on yep. one item. Yes. Um, has uh, someone been designated to kind of lead up the alumni development campaign? Well, Amherst Education Foundation will be working <coughs> with us, but Kim Stender is really um, kind of the, the conduit. Okay. But again, we would love any volunteers or people who are interested in helping us to really think um, a little more broadly um, around how to really connect with alumni. So if there are so suggestions. volunteers could count our suggestions please. could kind of funnel into Kim. Absolutely. And are we setting a target goal? Are we saying for 2012 or 2013 we're going for a million? Are we setting, you know, are we setting one of those? I would love to set that goal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, personally, I really don't have, I guess, let me say it this way. Amherst Education Foundation is very interested in expanding um, their, or in ex expanding their giving, the giving that has been coming into their, um, foundation and wants to be very realistic about wanting to do this well. So I would love to go, you know, gung ho, but I also want to take um, measurable steps that are attainable. So if, if we have some suggestions of what we think are attainable, um, I think starting with um, an activity that's open to the public, because again, I didn't want to sell tickets. I didn't want to have this be, I wanted it to be truly a community everyone could access event that's free and that can kick off some conversations around alumni giving um, and then see where we go from there but 
I, million sounds wonderful to me, actually. <laughs> but any suggestions, and if, if there are specific suggestions of people who have had much more experience in this world around this topic than I have, um, it would be greatly appreciated. Yes, Rick. Um, so on the last thing, the community conversations about race and ethnicity, you know, we get these reports every so often from Marta, usually, <laughs> equity. So will we be hearing reports from this group this meet meeting instead, more or less? You'll be, you'll be hearing um, the equity work is going to be kind of multi-layered. This will be one layer of work, okay. which will be, you know, facilitating conversations. You can have input and continue dialogue around this topic. Then the, you'll also hear some of the very specifics. That's um, March's work is very much embedded in the district improvement plan now. So when I come before you in a few weeks, you'll see um, a much more focused uh, district improvement plan where you'll be able to make the connections with Ron Ferguson's the movement okay. around how you affect change within our doors and within the broader community. Okay. So yeah, you'll hear both, but I think it'll be much a much kind of cleaner picture. Mm -hmm. And you met over the summer some more with Ron Ferguson, right? Or, um, our or? leadership team, yeah. which was not me yep. attending this yep. one, but the principals and Marta. So every school was represented, and Marta went to a four-day institute with Ron Ferguson. That was really powerful. And when they came back. My, the work that they kind of debriefed with me really strengthened some of the goal focus areas around needing to focus on um, use, the use of data in our schools, which is a piece of um, Mike's position, which is how do you really create a data system and a data-wise system where you're really looking not only at how you're using data to inform instruction at the classroom level, but how are you monitoring the progress of the district and schools around um, what you hope to see move and shift. Um, also, another area of focus was really around parent engagement. How are we connecting with families to, to create meaningful connections that affect and impact achievement? So you'll see in, um, when, when I bring to you the reorganization of central office staff and who's holding what areas of the world, you'll see that very clearly articulated on the plan and, and it's connected very much to Ron's work. Um, and, Dr. Ferguson's also extended that he would be happy to review the district improvement plan and give me feedback. So I'm waiting to get a date from him that I'm hopefully going to see him over the next few weeks myself um, and have him take a look and give me some feedback. So he's very committed to our to our district. Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's wonderful. It's very, really uh, invigorating. People are really excited about the work. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Maria. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to follow up on two things. Um, one is that, um, you know, I have been part of this community conversation about race and ethnicity, which I found um, very, um, uh, I've learned a lot and I continue to learn. And I was listening to some of the work that people did with Ron Ferguson. And so in light of that and thinking about our role as school committee members um, and, and this uh, notion of parent engagement, um, I've decided that I'm going to do a public office hours. Um, and I'm going to start with once a month, um, Thursday mornings at 7.30 mm -hmm. for a couple hours at the Loose Goose. And I invite any other school committee member who is interested or willing to either join me at those hours or create your own. Um, or we can work out some sort of schedule perhaps where, um, you know, we can take different times and days just That'd so that great. there's a place where um, people can come and talk or share their concerns or comments or have a conversation. Um, so that I, I wanted to announce that and that'll start in September. Um, and um, I just wanted to let everybody know that there's an updated committee meeting schedule, which we don't have copies of tonight. I can send that um, to people. With sort of the agenda and the <coughs> way that meetings, we're going to have more joint meetings this year, um, which I think makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And um, um, so that we can be more efficient about um, how reports get presented. Basically, can I speak to that yep. just for one minute, mm -hmm. if you wouldn't mind? Sure. I also just wanted to mention when I was meeting with the, 
the three chairs, but also with the leadership team this week, which um, was very helpful too that Michael was part of when I presented the district improvement plan in its draft form to the to the leadership team asking for their feedback, you know, warm and cool feedback um, <laughs> to revise my document, um, which you have to model what you expect. So I'm never comfortable, but we did it. And, and Michael was, it was great for him to be able to see hear the whole picture as well. One of the suggestions that came from Mark Jackson, and we talked about it for a while, is how do we want to present um, the district improvement plan and the school improvement plans this year? And what we've chosen to do is on the, the joint meeting that we have in September, which is toward the end of September, we're going to present um, the district improvement plan and the school improvement plans in one meeting. Because what we're gonna try to do is connect the dots and really talk about the foundation on which you're building, you know, your efforts, your reform efforts. And then I can speak to the district, and as I go through each district goal, then the principals will make the connections to the school goals. So you're gonna really be able to see the strong through lines of um, the work that we're all trying to do. And you'll also see when we get to the place of looking at the educator evaluation system, you'll see the through lines of superintendent, principal, educator, mm -hmm. and it's you'll see the lines clearly. So I think it'll make sense to start to really paint that picture in a way that um, it's taken a while to try to kind of <laughs> crystallize how you can really paint this picture where it's um, you know clearly articulated. So we're going to try that on the, the last, we'll see how it goes, but I, I think it is promising. Um, and we will spend, the leadership team will spend a lot of time between now and that date really thinking about a presentation that would be helpful. Um, okay. So we're going to do our best for that. Pack a bag for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I recommend not having anything else. Nothing day. else is on that <laughs> night. That is the only item, and I won't even do updates. So we're going to get started right away and have okay. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So uh, moving on, we have um, an item about excess um, surplus. surplus, excuse me, not excess, <laughs> never excess, surplus <laughs> equipment. And um, as you can see, uh, this is a very old vehicle um, and we need to vote in, in order to remove it. Um, and yes. I, I move to declare the 1985 International Bluebird School Bus VIN number 1HVLPHXM4VHA40640 is obsolete and to direct the Director of Finance and Operations to auction off, donate, or otherwise dispose of this material in conjunction with provisions of MGL 30B. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Great. Thank you. Unanimous. But you might like to know, Mr. Detweiler told me that they have someone who potentially may haul that away and pay the district $500 for the school. Wow. School. Yeah. So. That's a win-win. That's wonderful. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank Excellent. You. Oh, can I, can I say one other surplus thing? Just can I jump in for one? Sure. Also, Please. if you will notice when you come to the middle school that the old modular that was on the oh. side of the middle school oh, is no yeah. longer. Yeah. It is gone. So the leaking building that was sitting there is, they took that away this right. summer. And again, someone took it that away. It changes the look. It's, it's amazing. Does, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's really nice, actually. Yeah. So, so speaking of great. surplus. Yes. Um, so now we're going to have an enrollment update. Yep. From Maria. Okay. Um, do you, did you make copies of the enrollment? I did. Um, How? Did I not pass it? Oh, they're there. under here. I'm sorry. So, okay, so given this is the time of the year where we start to become a little firmer with our numbers. Again, we still watch very closely for um, the next two weeks because we do have movement, um, in particular some um, graduate students and others come in with children and, you know, we're, we're fairly firm. So at this point, I wanted to show you um, a draft of where we are and to orient you to this document. Um, you look across, the, you, know, you see each of the schools going down, Crocker Farm, Fort River, Wildwood, and you see the total. Across the top, you see K through six with totals. So um, orientation, if you look at Crocker Farm Kindergarten, the, the left boxes, there are 39 students. There are two sections, two classrooms, so that class size average is 19.5. So you'll, if you take a scan down that column, it's helpful to see what the class sizes are for the other elementary schools 
at this time. Um, so you'll see that in at the element at kindergarten we're around between 17 and 20. Um, first grade is is pretty solidly around 17 students per class. Grade two 16 per class across schools. Uh, Crocker Farm has the high of 23, and in grade three there's 20 at Fort River and 20.7, 20, 20 and 21 at uh, Wildwood. Uh, fourth grade, you can see 20, 21, 22. Fifth grade, 21, 20, 21. And sixth grade, 22, 20, 18. Um, these numbers, I have to say, are much more consistent than I've seen them in years past with less variance across schools. Uh, we did fill 25 school choice slots that are included in these numbers, which helps us to level out a little bit. Um, you'll see that there is a, um, the Crocker Farm third grade classroom is a place where we will be adding additional paraprofessional support mm -hmm. to help out. Sixth grade at Crocker, there's some configurations that they're working on because to provide smaller groups during the academic blocks. Um, and Wildwood, I think it's their third grade. Um, there are places where additional classroom paraprofessional paraprofessional support has been added. Again, I work very closely with the principals when they talk to me. Numbers don't mean everything. It's very much about the composition of, of children and their needs. Right. So when a principal comes to me and says, you know, yes, we have 20 students in that classroom, which doesn't look like an excessive number because these numbers are very, very comfortable, um, but there may be the composition requires additional support. So we are making those adjustments at this point if I need to add additional support with the principal. So at this point, I think there are uh, two classrooms, actually one, two, probably about five classrooms where I'm looking at some additional support based on configurations of students, um, which will be solidified over the next um, week or so once we uh, see who enters and leaves. Um, so we do expect there'll be some transition, but right now um, we're very comfortable. And if it stays, you know, if the numbers stay the way they are, we're off to a, a strong start in the school year. Um, if we had a few additional choice students, I might place them in a couple um, grades, second grade in particular. Um, but I think overall, uh, we're within kind of the, the zone by which, you know, when we had the conversation last year around class, optimal class size, we're within that, the ranges. But we will watch very closely over the next two weeks to see um, how things, um, you know, shake out because a few new students in one grade level can make a difference. Mm -hmm. So we'll be um, really mm -hmm. careful with that. Mm -hmm. uh, Questions? Yeah. Yes. Lawrence. So uh, what is what is the cutoff point for school choice? I guess I need to know a little bit more about that. What obviously, if someone moves into town. And they move in that they're in our an hour but if, so if we have open slots and a student say in September wants to join yeah. we would if we don't have anyone else on the waiting list we would we would fill that slot would. yes okay. but again I'm as you've noticed you know I know people were really concerned when we were putting choice right. in yeah. I've been very conservative with the numbers that I've, yeah. I've placed so yeah. again I would go to the principal who would check with the classroom teachers just to see okay. if the configuration, Excellent. you know what I mean? Right. But yes, we would. Yeah. Um, so, and we'll see over the next two weeks because there may be families out there who hear this and say, oh, maybe I want to check out second grade. Yep. Yeah. You'll revisit us with this later in September? Or Absolutely. I mean, I'll firm numbers are October, right? Yes, October 1 is our real firm, but I every meeting for the next um, probably uh, two months, I'll be bringing you an updated enrollment because yeah. we won't settle in for another few weeks anyway. Yeah. But it's helpful, I think, to see mm -hmm. that ebb and flow. And then when we get to budget time, we'll be looking at this closely. <coughs> and I will also, as we move into December or so, I'll be consciously thinking about you know, these classrooms where a principal may say, it's a little challenging so that we can project, project and predict what we need for the following yeah. year. Um, because sometimes, you know, a, a bubble of students follows year to year and at certain points it may become more problematic. Um, we had a conversation the other day about even, 
you know, as kids grow, their bodies become bigger and having a space, you know, 20, 25, whatever, 24 in second grade may feel very different than in sixth grade. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so we have to consider all of that. But as budget time, we, we get more heavily into budget, um, we'll be watching these numbers again and I'll be talking with principals to see how the classrooms are functioning. Yep. But right now we're feeling um, very comfortable. These are, um, from our perspective, very reasonable numbers. Right. Um, kindergarten for uh, Crocker Farm and Wildwood maybe like a tad high. But one question on that: yeah. Are did we take any choice kids in kindergarten? I think we took a, we took some in uh, Fort River, I believe. Yeah, we did take seven choice students in kindergarten. I believe they were at Fort River, but I could check which school. Um, I believe it was Fort River. So we we typically have around twenty. In kindergarten, anywhere from, you know, I think our guidelines were anywhere from 17 to 21 in um, kindergarten was our kind of our mm -hmm. comfort zone. Not that we couldn't go outside, but we would think about additional support. I'm hesitant to move students if I don't have to across schools, but in some cases, we do. Um, so if it were a situation where we received a few new students, we would then consider um, should they start at Fort River versus, say, Crocker. Um, but at this point, 20, I, I'm, I'm okay with, and the principals are as well. Another question was, last year there was a particular class. I'm drawing a blank on what class yeah. and what school. I, yeah, it's yeah. Does anybody uh, Fort remember? River. No, we got, we, we got an grade. email requesting, I don't remember, but I remember it was a second grade email. And it was the addition of another, another class. Yeah, last year it was the concern around uh, first grade, the now second grade at Fort River, which right. now is at 16.7 students in three sections. Uh, okay. Three classes, right. Yeah. So that one is, is so three sections. Yeah, I'm sorry. So three did we sections. Go from two to three? Yes. Oh, excellent. Yes. Yeah. And then um, we're watching closely Crocker Farm third grade and looking at additional uh, support at this moment, paraprofessional support. The sixth grade, while the number at Crocker does not look terribly high you know we're looking at some configurations and then um, the Wildwood fourth grade. Wildwood fourth grade well it's not uh, oh no I'm sorry Wildwood third grade well it's not a, a terribly high number um, we're providing some additional support based on configuration but again we will watch um, over time and again I'll rely on the principals to let me know if they're um, experiencing some some concerns Yep. And, and parents, you know, parents come forward and, and it's helpful to hear what their children's experience mm -hmm. um, has been. So um, we will be doing that as well. I just have a question, um, which is not actually about class size. I'm looking at um, Wildwood, mm -hmm. um, and sixth grade looks, I mean, 18.3 yep. uh, is, is, is great. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, but but the fact that there are four classes, that there are 22 classrooms now, is that, I don't know what the, sort of how many classrooms were last year did, and. Did we reflect that the, did that classroom number go down from when we reduced one? I don't know. I'm not I'd have to, to I'd have to add. Sure. Hold on a second. No, 22 classrooms, it is um, one less than we had projected okay. for this coming year. And we also did make the move um, of the Ames program transitioning right. to Fort River, so right. Wildwood is not, there's not a concern around classroom right. space. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. and in, That's right. I've, fine. I've forgotten about the Ames move. Okay. Yeah, it's really, the, it's one less classroom that we had anticipated. Yeah. We reduced, and again, I, I, week to week and looking at numbers, so we may, at two weeks ago, have planned to have, you know, three sections or four sections, and I reduce based on enrollments, and it's a hard <laughs> thing for yeah. the faculty, because they're, their assignment may change, right. but it has to be about using the resources, you know, efficiently. Yeah. Okay. So, um, can I take a minute to introduce someone who Absolutely. you may not have met? This is the other Anne Marie Foley, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, who will be joining as an interim co-principal at Crocker this year. So, Amherst School Committee, welcome. 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 <laughs> so, while, while she's walking in, I thought we should. Great. Thank you for letting me yes. do that. I can, can we, we'll can take we it talk offline. About that? Yeah. yeah, we'll talk about, can we talk about after the meeting? 
Okay. Hang around. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Uh, well, um, okay. Moving on. Um, are we accepting gifts? Yes, we are. I'm going to start here somewhere. Okay. Move that we accept uh, gifts made um, to Crocker Farm in honor of Paul Wiley, to Crocker Farm at the principal's discretion, to the Laurie Rabbit Stream Scholarship Fund, and to Ford River at the principal's discretion uh, as presented in our uh, documents. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much. All right, moving on to a very long list of policies. Um, many of these policies have been voted already by the region, um, but uh, Debbie reminded me uh, rightly that um, Lawrence and Shabazz may not have been on the regional committee at the time that these were approved. So um, I am perfectly open to uh, using this as a first read and we can vote on them at another time, or if you've read through them and feel comfortable, we could vote tonight. Um, I'll sort of leave it up to the committee to discuss. Were you looking, mm -hmm. were you looking for um, individual, uh, going down them individually one by one? Were you trying to do them as a group? Um, well, if we were, t if you felt comfortable with all of them, we could vote as a group, um, but we can certainly have a discussion about each of them or the ones that um, there is dis there are discussion points about before we get to that point. And Lawrence, you're on the policy committee, so I don't know if you've seen these. I have. Okay. Yeah. So I'm quite comfortable. And actually, the I think the the executive session isn't that. I think that's new. Mm -hmm. Per the attorney generals. Mm -hmm. Right. These are these that's are right. some language changes. Right. That uh, that are a response to the attorney general's decisions. Right. Some of their decisions. My understanding is that most of these session. things are, cha are slight changes, changes or adjustments. Right. right. And one of them is: Do we have Debbie would know? There's one that we. I don't know if it's just the regional committee or if all the committees have to vote on by September 1st? Is that Michael's law? Is that that has called? to be voted first by the region it before does. it's presented to the others, so it will be presented next week. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. And then we have one that we're going to delete. Um. <coughs> the, yeah, last, so those are first. the last two policies, Ms. Ashley, are, um, are just for Amherst. Yes, yeah. And they are this first is your reading. First time to see yes, them. so we won't vote <coughs> on those. Sure yes, we won't vote on those. So, are there questions? Yeah, Rick. If there aren't any questions, I was going to make a motion to approve them as a lump, but I won't do that. If there are mm -hmm. questions. I don't have any questions, but I do think the uh, I've read closely the executive. Uh, session rules, uh -huh. and I think it's a vast improvement over what, mm -hmm. what existed before. Oh, good. Just expedites yeah. them. Mm -hmm. It uh, makes right. you know, a policy subcommittee meeting we were talking about minutes mm -hmm. that were that have been buried sometimes. Right. Uh, someone, uh, a superintendent, a chair of the committee will come in and find the minutes from executive sessions that I guess they're fairly minor issues, but they build up four or right. five years, mm -hmm. and I think what's great about this is it just uh, for the sake of disclosure, for the sake exactly. of transparency, right. it just moves that process along and yeah. just says, let's just do that. So right. I, I think it's an improvement. Much so. improved. Yep. Good. So I yeah. think if we could at least approve that tonight, although I'd be comfortable with approving all of them. Mm -hmm. Shabazz, do you have thoughts or questions? Um, there are some, I was mentioning the the acronyms, you know, I've seen some of this when I received the, uh, the Red Book, and I know it's part of how these different things are coded or tabbed or sectioned off. Mm -hmm. um, and so some of this then um, doesn't, you know, is not unfamiliar uh, to me. But um, the, um, and so the ones that are already, already been approved by uh, the regional and 
that I feel comfortable taking them as a group. So. Okay, that's great. Okay, uh, I move to approve the following policies BB, BEBB retreat meetings, BEC executive session, BEDA notification of meetings, BEDF voting, BEDG minutes, BE, BEEA annual budget hearing, BGD review of administrative regulations. BIA, New School Committee Member Orientation, BIBA, Conferences, Conventions, and Workshops, BID, Member Compensation and Expenses, BJ, Legislative Program, BK, Membership and Affiliations, and to delete uh, the following policy, BED, Procedures for Meetings. A second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Um, so we're now left with the elementary only, the oath of office, and the superintendents of Union 26 committee meetings. Um, we will consider this a first read. Um, are there thoughts or comments or feedback for the policy committee on these um, two policies? When you say, say that these are 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 new, what, what's what do you mean by that? Well, I, I think what it is is that they have been um, uh, updated. They're not new policies. Okay. Um, but there have been some slight changes, in perhaps wording or updates based on changes in requirements or laws or. Um, so I don't have often. When we when a policy is updated, you'll see the crossed out part, and um, I don't see that here. But um, it looks like it's referencing um, some mass general law. I think the only one that's new, um, Elaine Brady, who does a wonderful job mm -hmm. of helping us with the yes, policy committee, always puts the topic it's brand new, mm -hmm. and B E A A does in fact say new policy at the top. I believe that one. Is oh, you're absolutely right, Debbie. One. Thank you. The, the school committee's oath of office is one that used to be voted for approval by the region. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Spence very rightfully pointed out that it's only the Amherst Correct. School Committee and Pelham who Correct. have to take a vote of Correct. office. So that's why that's just simply been moved into um, okay. your purview for approval. So there was no policy before about the superintendency union. That's interesting. Okay. The last paragraph of the superintendency uh, union talks about that the Union 26 School Committee will determine the amount of service to be rendered by the superintendent and will apportion the payment of the superintendent between the two towns. First, it's not just the superintendent, it's the whole central office, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and second, we have that, we went through this all last year to figure out like apportioning all of those costs between region, Amherst, and Pella. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure in, in that process wasn't in any kind of a policy. It was mm -hmm. like the the, sub, the budget subcommittee looking at it and Rob working on it and mm -hmm. just figuring it out. So I don't know about that last paragraph. Could we run it? When, when did you, I'm just going to write this down when I bring it back to the policy. When was it discussed? Um, was it last fall? Uh, it would have been wound up last spring sometime during, um, during budget subcommittee meetings, and Rob Detweiler would have all that information because he yeah, proposed the new breakdown. Right. Um, <coughs> I don't remember the exact time that Mr. Detweiler brought it to the committee. They did come up with a new apportionment, which we are following in central office. I believe it's 45 42. And I don't remember. Um, it has been changed. <laughs> um, and I believe. I believe that the reason this last piece was put in is to ensure that it will be looked at occasionally um, to make sure that it by Emerson Pelham by Emerson Pelham yeah. to make sure that it stays current or Union 26 which is Emerson Pelham together so that it won't happen again that 
because as you will remember, Mr. Hood, I don't believe there was um, a formula that they had used. It was just, mm -hmm. here's what we do, 50, 47, 3. Right. And no one could really say where that came from. And I think this is to ensure that we always keep looking at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it does say will determine. Um, so I don't know, it yeah, sounds like that, that committee is determining it. And also, it's leaving out the region. So it seems weird. And just a <clears throat> between or among the entities, I don't know the, the well, maybe structures. Lawrence, um, is there a policy subcommittee meeting uh, coming up between now and our next? Actually, at the last policy subcommittee meeting, we decided to not schedule one. Usually, we do, but we decided not to schedule one until all the committees reorganize mm -hmm. their assignments for who's going to go into what uh, subcommittee. But this is just the first reading, so we'll right. Just, yeah. So I'm just wondering if you can bring oh, it back. Yeah. At, at oh, we could point. definitely yeah. do that, and, 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 and whenever and it is, I'd like to continue serving on that. So no excellent, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate that. Good. Um, in fact, we did make committee appointments. Um, do we have to remake committee appointments? Um, I believe they ended up tabling that at the retreat. Yes. We did. Yeah, okay. so we'll probably we do through. that at think, our yeah. I think next some people had volunteered meeting. at a previous one. That's right. Been. Okay. Mm. So some of them have been. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. But you are willing to serve. That's very helpful. So if you, I mean, it would be helpful to bring it back and, and yeah. share that concern. Yeah. That I will. I'll how Because yeah. that's yeah. a good question. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I agree. Um, other questions or concerns about other of these policies? All right, um, so we will move on, and um, hopefully we can get an answer to Rick's question um, when we bring this up at our next yeah, Amherst meeting, which, which will be the 18th. Yep, September 18th. Okay. And I'll make sure that we send this updated um, document out to people. I just kind of moved a few topics around, but it's still the same schedule that you, you right. received the dates before, the same. the same dates, so nothing has shifted there. Okay. Um, so we've talked about the calendar. Um, are there items for future agenda that people um, would like to see? Shabon? So the district improvement plans are already on mm -hmm. the calendar? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the September 25th, and that'll be the district plan and the school plans. And that's a joint meeting. So we'll do that together. Lawrence? I would like to have uh, something about the language immersion. Proposal okay. that we had. Yeah. Okay. And get a follow up here from Marta Rivera. Okay. Yeah. We've been meeting. That's actually yes, we have. see what's going on with yes. that. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Great. Okay. Rick? I guess, you know, we have the Spanish program now, and I guess this year we're dropping the lower grades, so it'd be nice to know, you know, what are we doing with that? And I, if I remember right, the original plan was by the time they get to middle school, they can skip a grade or something to go into Spanish. Mm -hmm. Is that still the plan or not the plan? Okay. And I'd just be interested yeah. mm -hmm. to, to hear. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. As far as, my, uh, as, far as concerns with uh, questions of um, uh, disparities and equity and I'm prepared to see what evolves out of the conversations and then see where that may present itself as an agenda item mm -hmm. for, um, for us to, to um, look at and discuss. But um, I'll see how it goes with uh, the meetings that are forthcoming. Great. And that might even be something um, that we would want to discuss uh, at a joint meeting because I think mm -hmm. that you know, it's, it's, it's bigger than the True elementary enough. schools. Right. Right. There, there might be various curriculum things like what what's the latest with math in the elementary mm -hmm. schools, mm -hmm. but does that schedule have on it like like when curriculum is going to be reviewed with us and that kind of thing? Because yeah, one thing I just wanted to mention, if maybe that's doing it, is um is you know we we wanted to pre-schedule when we're going to talk about what, yep. and so yeah. that we're not just talking about something just because we're mm -hmm. asking for it, you right. know, and so that particularly Absolutely. also since the school. Mm -hmm personnel have a lot of advance notice as to when they're going to be presenting to us and that kind of thing. So that would be good to have if that's yeah. what that is. 
Um, what I could do too is I'm meeting with the principals tomorrow and with you know a whole host of topics for the start of the school year that we could take a look at this document and just I can pose some of those specific questions of when would we be bringing forward you know a report around science one would be brief, you know an update brief update around math at the elementary level but I could bring those in again the same language immersion update on Spanish and just knowing that we'll be talking much more about our equity work as we kind of move forward but I'd be happy to, to right check that in. would be really helpful and also that would be something Rick um, with this with the uh, additions of more joint meetings yeah. that would That's be joint helpful. meeting mm -hmm. um, thing I think which would be really helpful yeah. mm -hmm. okay anything else it's not specifically on the agenda items but in light of the um, policy items we've just approved I have a few questions um, and uh, one is um, is I think I can get my own copy of Robert rules of order but if there is a preferred or something that is consistent with what uh, uh, would be referred to I would appreciate knowing that so I can get mm -hmm. whatever yeah. one is is Absolutely. consistent with what the chairperson and what is will be used per per these policies. Okay. Um, secondly, the um, uh, the way I'm reading um, the BID item, I am concerned whether uh, it needs to be brought up here for school committee approval. Um, my um, attending the uh, new member orientation session uh, that I'm looking at for uh, September. It is a free um, uh, thing, but there is a meal component if you so choose. Mm -hmm. And if that, so again, I'm just wondering if that or any other expenses mm -hmm. incurred in that trip, if that's something that I need to raise here or if it's already considered a reimbursable expense. That's a good question. Um, you know, Debbie, jump in if you don't Yeah, please, you know, Debbie. In the time that I've been serving as the school committee recording secretary, there's never been a vote to approve expenses for that particular trip because it's expected of all school committee members. Okay. I believe that there's tacit agreement that you have to take this, those expenses will be reimbursed. I think if it's something beyond that, okay. it would have to be approved by the full school committee. And does okay. that apply as well for the November joint mask? Uh, thing that we made. Yes, yes, because we do always send folks to that. Yeah. The one thing that, as mm -hmm. Maria will government. remember, yeah. last year yeah. everybody, I think just about every member was able to go. Mm -hmm. And so it was discussed at the school committee because right. so many folks were wa wanting to go and we had to plan for that financially. But um, it's it a is wonderful something that's opportunity. expected. Mm -hmm. um, could I also, do we have Robert's rules? Oh, would you? Mr. Kuchar sent to me after the retreat oh, a little good. cheat sheet thing that I'm going to bring next week because he gave it for everybody. Great. I think it has a lot of the Roberts rules on there, but I also have a few copies that I'm happy to give you one of Shabazz if you want it. We also, Shabazz, I don't know, we got a pretty hefty book at our orientation. Did you get a copy of that? Nope. Okay, so All I'll right. make sure. Do you yeah. have? I don't have an extra, but Please I was bring it and we'll copy. Yeah. Gosh, we should grab that. Yeah, okay. from, from Mr. Kutcher. Can I ask one more? Yeah. <clears throat> Can I ask, because I don't know if you were asking this question too, Shabazz, but what is, what's up with this labeling of these? Is there some rhyme or reason? There is. Um, it's based on know. the Massachusetts Association of School Committees. Okay. The way they put it yeah. together, we used to have ours numbered. Okay, so BID so they makes were sense different. somewhere. Yeah, and it does. It actually has to do with. Right. I have, I have the same question. It does right. have to do with. For instance, sort of sub all areas. policies under B relate to school committee. Right. Oh. All policies right. under other things relate to students, faculty, yes. et cetera. Right. And then there's rhyme and reason to the rest of the letters, but I can't tell you what they Well, are. and I'm, I'm happy to ask these questions so that we're all learning at the same time. <laughs> right. but thank you. Sure. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, on that note, if there's nothing else, uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.